are staying at the newest hotel in Disney World. Is it worth it to skip a Disney hotel and instead stay still on property but at a not Disney owned hotel here at the Drury Plaza Hotel in the Disney Springs area? We're gonna find out. Drury Plaza Hotel is a brand new hotel here in Disney World that just opened at the end of 2022. It is located 0.5 miles from Disney Springs, perfectly walkable, and it does include some Disney perks as well as some Drury specific perks that you won't find at Disney hotels. I have heard rave reviews about Drury hotels in general. This one is brand new, so it's sure to have a pretty interesting experience here for the first time. I've also stayed in this area and walked to Disney Springs before without too much trouble, but I don't know, let's head in. This hotel does net you early entry at the theme park, so maybe it's worth it to skip the Disney hotel and instead stay at one of these Disney Springs area hotels like the Drury. One thing is that after check-in, you will be giving a parking permit. They do have gates on the parking lot, so it's possible that this will shift up, but for now it is a paper parking permit that they give you uh, once you check in and pay for parking and you can hang from your car's rear view mirror. The Drury Hotel is not a resort like most of the Disney hotels. It's just a plain hotel, but there's still a lot to see here and a lot of amenities, including some that I wish they had at Disney, but they never would. Um, so when you walk in, you head straight into the lobby which is a nice open space. You'll find that check-in desk to your left where you'll get all your information for your stay once you check in, um, as well as some important materials that we'll look at a little more once we're up in the room. And there's plenty of space to hang out in the lobby as well if uh, you want to take a seat while your family's checking in or if you want to stop by one of the dining locations that we will be sure to check out some more later. Check-in is at 4 p.m., which is an hour later than most of the Disney World Resort hotels, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you check in at the front desk. I'm all checked in and I have my homework. Just kidding, it's not homework, it's fun stuff that I will show you. Um, but first I'm gonna make a quick stop because I am so tired even though it's 4 p.m. Maybe because uh, we just filmed Fred Bucket's No Sleep Challenge and our late night Walt Disney World video this week. And I have not bounced back from that like I expected. You can check that on the channel right now though. Before I head up to my room, I'm gonna stop here in the marketplace. This is one of the food and dining locations here at Drury Plaza Hotel. There is Starbucks coffee being served in here, which is amazing. There's also a Pizza Hut Express, so you can get Pizza Hut literally whenever, when you're staying here. Not literally whenever, but you get what I mean. Um, and there's also a lot of like little grab and go snacks. And Starbucks coffee acquired. Thank you, Marketplace. Um, this was like under $4. It's just a Pike's place, but still. All right, all checked in, coffee in hand. Easy peasy, checking in and getting coffee took like five minutes. So uh, time to, I think, See the most important part of our stay, even if it's not the most exciting, the room. And then we're coming back down for a very exciting thing, but that's after room tour. We're on the 12th floor, which I think means we'll have a pretty good view. All right, moment of truth. Time to see in the room. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I just turned off the same light. Hello, where are the light switches? All right, of course, we're going to tour this room in depth but a quick scan first, not too shabby. I'm noticing that it's not the largest room, but there are a lot of like, spa the space is used very well. And it's definitely not the smallest room either. Let's check out that 12th floor view before it gets too dark. Oh yeah, definitely not bad. Got the luxurious view of I-4. My room is facing away towards I-4. Um, away from Disney property and even the rooms facing towards Disney property, those might have a fireworks view. Um, whereas these ones, unless you catch fireworks from off Disney property, I don't believe would. All right, so just for reference, I screen recorded my Google Maps app and you can see my little blue dot with the blue like fan out. The way that I'm facing it first is out towards I-4. So yeah, no Disney fireworks that way. If you turn around on the opposite side of the building from where my room is, there's actually uh, very, very close to Epcot. So I'm thinking that maybe you could see Epcot fireworks from over there, but we might have to investigate tonight. I know that some rooms and areas here at Drury do have fireworks views, so that's confirmed. I just have to find them. <laughs> now we're gonna do a tour of the room and we're gonna do it speedily, especially because what we're doing after the room is going to blow your mind. A Disney World hotel could never, especially for $200 a night, including parking. Okay, checking out the room. We're gonna start here in the entryway, which is kind of a little mini room of its own. So there's no closet in this room, but there is this sort of hutch, which serves as your closet. It's got plenty of hangers in here, um, as well as the like dry cleaning uh, laundry 
bill thing if you want to do that. Uh, there is an iron uh, and an ironing board, although I don't see a steamer, but you can use the iron, of course, for that kind of thing. Typically, um, we've got some cute little prints. This hotel, though it doesn't have Disney touches, does have Orlando, Florida touches, which I think is very fun. Um, coffee machine. Uh, it's just a little like instant coffee machine. They have this Cafe Valet blend, uh, decaf and regular sugars and things like that. And then your ice bucket with some plastic cups. Below that, we have your safe programmable uh, microwave. Da, 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 da. You don't get microwaves in most Disney hotel rooms. You have to be staying at a Disney vacation club uh, resort to potentially have a microwave. But microwaves here at the Drury, that means you could go grab the microwave food that they sell at the marketplace. You could go have your leftovers from, I don't know, the kickback or dinner that you pay for. Oh, dinner that you pay for. Oh, wait, spoilers. But you can actually, like, make stuff in the microwave, which is just great because I'm the queen of leftovers, and typically I have to eat them cold in bed, and it's sad. Mini fridge down here is relatively small. Um, I think you'd be able to fit everything in here. It's definitely on the smaller side of mini fridges in hotel rooms, but I think you'd be okay. Got a little storage space, perfect snack storage space, and this little poof. Um, which I guess is here in case you want to observe things in the microwave cooking. It's the perfect height. I'm sitting on the poof. I can stir, I can stir right at this microwave. The next we have our first sink of the room. Big mirror, not full length, but you can see me do this. I don't know what this is, but you can see it. Um, got a little sink here. There's a gentle facial bar, soap here for you. Um, I really like this. It's outside of the bathroom, so it makes it so that there's two spots in this room that people can get ready, which is really cool. Um, and two sinks is just really nice. Hand towel out here, and that kind of completes our little caddy area here at the entrance. And the room kind of opens up when you get in here. There are king bedrooms, two queen bedrooms, great for families, and two room suites. Uh, then they also are have some variances with uh, terraces, different views, and sometimes sleeper sofas. This is a standard view king bed room, one of the cheaper options. The king bed and the two queen bedrooms tend to be about the same price, um, and they are about the same size. So this sort of space over here in a double queen room would be taken up by the double queen a little more. And the rooms are about the same size. So in a double queen bedroom, the queen beds are just both up against this wall. We don't typically get to do king size bed bed science. So that's gonna be really exciting when we test out how comfy the bed is in a few minutes. Um, but next to the bed, you've got a lamp on either side, no reading lights, so this would definitely keep somebody up. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you need to bring a reading light. Uh, nice sunset Florida picture. Controllable thermostat that you can set to your liking. And then here's another thing you won't see in Disney hotel rooms. This is an alarm clock. Uh, they do not have these in Disney hotel rooms. They are, however, coming out with the Hey Disney Alexa service in Disney hotel rooms, which will serve as sort of an alarm system as well. Uh, drawers in the side tables are smaller than they look. They come out wider on the side, but still pretty sizable in here. And while there is some space under the side tables that you could store stuff, there's no space under the bed. Which is good because you won't lose anything but bad because it limits storage space. Across from the bed we have our longer mirror. Again, not quite full length and it's a little high up, but you can see me do this. And then luggage rack, which I never used to use luggage racks and now I find them incredibly important in a hotel room. So happy for that. This I also really like. There's this desk space. Jury does have meeting space, convention center space. It's not open yet, but it will be. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the morning. But if you were here on business or needed to take care of anything, there's like a nice, comfy business chair in here and a solid desk space to work on, complete with like a little outlet for it. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is comfy. I said comfy, but I was kind of just going on looks alone. This thing's really comfy. Yeah. Got a phone here. What I love is it's cordless. Um, I called the front desk a second ago for a question about the restaurant closing times and I could walk around the room with this. It was great. Pretty sizable TV here, controlled by this remote. Um, and it does have buttons for Netflix and YouTube um, and Google. So I'm gonna assume that it does have that. I'll let you know if that's not true. And there is this little channel guide that you can use as well. Food Network, that's all I needed to see. Just like in Disney, you cannot smoke or vape in the room, but they do have a warning about that. Um, another lamp here. And then here's your main dresser space. It's three drawers, and they look very sizable from the outside. I'll show you. They're a lot smaller. 
See that? See how far they come in on the sides? Still big drawers. I don't think you would have much issue. Um, it's just, I think with maybe a whole family stuff, there's not quite as much storage room as I've seen in some other hotels here. Picture of oranges that reminds me of the original Soren over California. If you know, you know. I miss it. You do have a side table on the other side that has a, the same size drawer and a little plug but no alarm clock. And then there's this little sitting area which I really enjoy, especially because with that microwave, what if I want to eat? So two chairs here that are not as comfortable as the rolly chair. I'll tell ya. And the kitchen and bar menu is here as well. Um, this is really cool because though there's not like room service, you can order online and then go pick up your food. So they have pickup available at Lakeside Bar and Grill during the day and then in the evening it's kitchen and bar. And kitchen and bar is typically open till 11 or midnight. So pretty late night food options, which is something that is really rare to see at Disney hotels. Most Disney hotels uh, food kind of closes at 11 and here you can find something to eat pretty much till midnight most nights. We obviously saw the view earlier, which is good because it got dark really fast because it's winter, but you do have your blackout curtains, ever important, and privacy curtains. Um, I always use the privacy curtains when I sleep in hotel rooms uh, because, unless I'm like on the first floor, because I like to uh, have the sunlight come in to help me wake up in the morning. And bed-wise, you've got this headboard that looks like a chocolate bar. You can't tell me that doesn't look like a chocolate bar. It looks just like a chocolate bar. And there are five pillows. Um, and it's very, this bed looks pristine. And I'm gonna mess it up for science. You know what time it is. It's not Disney Hotel Giant King Bed Science with Quincy. Huh. Oh, hey, okay, it's pretty good. Um, this feels to me a lot like a Disney mattress. It's that mix right between like firm and soft so that it pleases more people. I actually think this is a little firmer than a Disney mattress, but it's still very comfortable. It's still, it feels high quality. It doesn't feel like springy or anything like that. It's nice. And my big thing, the pillows. Okay, all right. Not, so Disney pillows, there's about a full hand of head sinkage, which isn't quite happening here. I would say it's three quarters of my hand head sinkaging into this pillow, but relatively soft. I'm a soft pillow gal, and hotel pillows tend to be right for me. If you are a firm pillow person, Disney World hotels, including the jewelry, honestly, probably not for you, but pillows aren't firm, they're soft. I think these are comfy. I feel like I'm going to get a good night's sleep, but we all know that bed science can't be complete just with a jump and a pillow test. Bed science can only be complete with a full eight-ish hours, which I will get tonight and report back in the morning. On to the bathroom. Next part, very important. Bathroom time. All right, first things first. Bathroom has a sliding barn door, which is great because it takes up less space. Um, not so great because it doesn't actually have a lock on it, um, which this is a single king room, so that could make sense because it's probably just going to be a single person or a couple in here, but... Um, there is no lock, so just something to note. Bathroom is pretty small, but has a lot going for it. There's everything you need in here, pretty much. You got the ever important commode. You've got your towels, your spirally shell picture that everybody needs in a bathroom. Um, I will say one person like will have to wait if somebody else is in the shower, um, unless you're comfy doing that because there is no separation between the toilet and the shower. Shower has nice glass sliding doors to shut it off from the rest of the room. Uh, shower head, I'll show you the pressure. Wow, pretty good, honestly. The soap, we've got body wash, shampoo, and conditioner. Um, soap dish over here, uh, two different handrails. Well, I guess this is a handrail and then you have a towel rod here inside the shower, but I love that there's a handrail. That's very helpful. Um, another little ledge down here, also incredibly helpful. Um, ladies trying to shave legs and shower without one of those, a nightmare. Um, and it has the bath mat over there as well. And on the sink side, we've got this beautiful mirror, best mirror in the house, because look at the lighting. I hate when hotel mirrors have bad bathroom lighting, because how am I supposed to do my makeup in that? But I can do my makeup in this, because it's beautiful oh. lighting. Got some hand towels here to go with all these regular towels. Then you've got tissue here. We've also got a little bit of body lotion, um, some gentle facial bar in here as well, just like the one out there. And another sink. So again, two sinks. Two sinks, baby. That one's bigger than this one. Under the sink, you've got a little like storage space cubby for some of your stuff. 
um, Hamilton Beach hair dryer, and then toilet paper and extra toilet paper, as well as another trash can. So you got two trash cans in the room. Overall, definitely a more basic hotel room, but it has everything I feel like you'll need, um, has enough space, and I feel like it has some amenities that I miss when I'm in Disney World, like a microwave, an alarm clock, solid desk space in most of the hotels. So I think a very, for the, for the space, for the price, unbelievable. Speaking of price, let's talk about it. Hello, it is I, Business Quincy, my business chair, here to talk about pricing. So, pricing. Pricing for all of these rooms is dependent on date and some of those other amenities like the terrace, like the view, and like the sleeper sofa. But pricing for a king bed room, gonna start at $175 per night and go up to around $350 per night depending on date. Which I will say is about how an all-star is priced in Disney World and this is much better than an all-star. If an all-star gave me free dinner, that would be mind blowing. The two queen bedrooms start at about $215 per night and go up to around $400 per night. And then those two room suites range from about $290 to about $460 per night. I think that the pricing between a king and a queen varies so much because you can get so many more people in a queen room and when they're giving free food, free drinks, um, that they kind of have to factor that in. But still, this hotel is wildly, wildly cheaper than a Disney hotel. You still get a lot of the Disney perks because it's a good neighbor hotel, like early entry. You can still see fireworks views. They have shuttles to the theme parks, which we'll talk a little bit more about because it is more complicated than Disney transportation and not quite as easy, but we'll talk a little bit more about it. It's really interesting how differently it's priced. Like I would pay, I paid, I paid $200 for this hotel room today. And that is what I would pay at an all-star hands down, hands down. It's priced the same as an all-star wild. Also, I can walk to Disney Springs. That's cool. Business Quincy out. Now I've got some hotel to see, but we're actually going to handle this a little bit differently than we usually do because there's just not that much to do at this hotel compared to a full resort on property. Uh, we are going to actually pretty much experience almost everything that you can to do at this hotel. Uh, we've seen the marketplace, and now we've also got to see the 530 kickback. This is the amenity that I am most shocked by and excited about. So Drury Plaza Hotel not only has free hot full breakfast in the morning for everybody staying there, they also have the 530 kickback, which is a light dinner service from 530 to 730, where not only do you get free light dinner service, you also get this card when you check in, which gives you three free alcoholic beverages at the 530 kickback. It's very cool. That's definitely where we're going now because we have to check that out. That's included with your room. Can you imagine getting one free alcoholic beverage at Disney, much less three? No, and we're in Disney World right now doing it. We're just not at a Disney hotel. Let's go check it out. Ooh, on the way there, I did find a very pretty view. This is the opposite side from where our room is. And if you'll see, uh, Disney Springs is over there. You can see the aerophile and that purple dome way in the distance is Epcot. There's a huge dining area set aside for the complimentary dining offerings at Drury. There's a lot of drink options like juices, sodas, coffee, everything you can want there. And then tonight for the 530 kickback, they have grilled chicken slices, pasta alfredo, mixed vegetables, baked potato, um, and soup and salad. So a pretty intense selection, honestly for free food. I mean, you could eat dinner for free here. The caveat to that, of course, is that the 5.30 kickback is, the caveat to that, of course, is that the 5.30 kickback is from 5.30 to 7.30. So odds are, if you're here for Disney World, you're gonna be in the theme parks during that time. But if you can run back, you could save some serious money. Or if you have a resort date, you're gonna save some serious money. On top of that, they've got steamed hot dogs and buns around this corner, plus potato chips and things like that, nacho cheese. And then of course there's the bar where you can uh, get your complimentary three alcoholic beverages from the very cool bartender. So the 5.30 p.m. kickback is a complimentary light dinner service and bar service. Uh, you get three drinks, they have liquors, wine, and beer. Um, you get whatever dinner they're serving that night, which does rotate. Um, and there's also sodas, coffees, and juices. So for my drink, I went with the margarita here. Uh, this is just their like house margarita that you can order for free. This is so wild. This would be $10 in Disney World. Um, tequila, margarita mix, triple sec, lime. And you can get it with or without salt. And I got it without salt. Cheers. It's not super strong, but it's not weak like I was kind of expecting it would be since it's a free drink. 
I can definitely taste the tequila in there. The main flavors are coming through from the margarita mix, so it's got a good amount of sweetness to it. Um, but a nice little like bitter kick on the end too. It's a solid margarita. I would pay $10 for this elsewhere. So I can tell you it really just tastes better because it is literally free. There's not even a resort fee here. This is wild. All right, now I've gone for food, uh, which looks amazing. Uh, this was all free and I can have as much as I want. That's just mind blowing to me. Can you imagine free, I just, I, I know I keep saying that, but can you imagine free dinner anywhere else? Free all you care to enjoy dinner in a two hour span with like that varies night per night. It's just, I mean, it's so wild to me that it's $200 a night to stay at this hotel. But tonight the offerings were salad, there was soup, which was hearty chili, baked potato that you can get sour cream and butter with. There's Alfredo, uh, chicken slices, and mixed veggies, which was like green beans and carrots. Um, I also grabbed a bunch of like fixins. I got sour cream and croutons for my salad, oyster crackers for my chili, golden Italian dressing. Baked potato time. I don't know that you can go wrong with the baked potato. This is a perfectly cooked potato. And they have everything that I wanted on it. Uh, sour cream, butter spread, salt pepper. Delicious. I'm filling. I'm free. More stuff on the plate. Veggies. Basic veggies. Very fresh. I think they just have a little salt on them. That's awesome because Breed Love can eat those so they have an option for vegans. And well cooked. There's nothing special going on with them. The Alfredo. It's much better than I was expecting. I was expecting like crummy kids section of the buffet Alfredo. But this is more like Alfredo sauce out of a can you can make at home. Which I'm not saying is delicious, but it's much better than crummy kids section of the buffet Alfredo. Chicken. Also better than I was expecting. A little peppery. Well cooked. I think boiled. It's got a little of that boiled taste to it. But great simple way to get some protein. And then salad. I have the golden Italian craft dressing. All the dressings are packaged. Pretty basic. Fresh leafy greens, bursting little baby um, tomatoes. What are those called? Cherry tomatoes. Uh, everything on this plate is very basic. It's not very exciting, but it is free. It is certainly enough for a dinner. And I can get seconds if I wanted. So I'm loving it here. Just gotta try the chili. Reminds me of Walt's chili in the theme parks, which is just like a really basic, super mild chili. No heat at all. Um, with large like kidney beans in it, which is what this is. I added sour cream. I think I'd probably add some hot sauce, but overall, just a really stellar, really filling meal. And I like feel taken care of. Like this food is free. I feel like I'm getting fed at a friend's house, but I'm at a hotel. I love it here. I also want to note that the food does vary. So it's not going to be what I'm having tonight every night. Probably about the same quality and the same quantity. Um, I know that one of uh, our managers did say that she had a fajita bar here once, so that sounds pretty good too. All right, that's our 5.30 kickback. So I'm gonna head up to the room, reorient, and then we're gonna see more of this hotel. And there's a surprising amount still to see. Obviously, this is an unbelievable perk, um, coupled with the free hot breakfast, which we are gonna check out in the morning. Um, just, you barely see continental breakfast at hotels anymore, much less a full hot breakfast and a 5.30 dinner service. It's insane. It feels very hospitable. Like I said, more to see. We're gonna go see more. I do also have to say, I feel like these lights were on sale for hotels or something. These like circle lights, not that chandelier per se, but the ones in here, those lights gotta, gotta be on sale because those are the same circle lights at the Riviera. And I saw them at one of the hotels we stayed at in Disneyland. So what's up with that? Um, also there's free popcorn. I can't eat popcorn, but if I could, that would be really cool. <laughs> okay, back at the room from the kickback. Um, I think we're gonna take a look at some of the sort of things they handed us, talk a little bit more about amenities. You know the room has a microwave, you know you get free food at breakfast and for the kickback. Um, there's also free Wi-Fi at the hotel. I literally didn't even have to do anything to connect. I connected in the parking lot before I had checked in. Um, and it's been working swimmingly since I got here. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they gave me a lot of materials when I got in. Not a lot, but they gave me some stuff to look at. So there's this really cute Disney Springs Hotel's little welcome booklet, which I think is really fun. This is the Disney touch you're getting. This 
resort area Disney Springs hotels. Because these hotels are friends of Disney. They're called Good Neighbor Hotels, which is how they do get some of those Disney perks, like early entry. We'll talk more about those a little later. Uh, this comes with this really cool passport to savings, which is this Disney Springs pamphlet. It does have... Um, a map of Disney Springs as well as everything in Disney Springs listed out. And it also has advertisements throughout that include coupons. So $10 off a $50 purchase at House of Blues. Uh, you've got 15% off at Kendra Scott. 20% off at Columbia. Um, and this is just kind of given to you when you check in just to have. Which is awesome because being so close to Disney Springs, it would be hard not to go. Uh, the other thing you get is this Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando Disney Springs area little pamphlet with all the information. So it does show the free amenities. You've got the Wi-Fi throughout the hotels, popcorn and soda from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., which we saw earlier at the kickback. You've got that 5.30 kickback from 5.30 to 7.30, and then hot breakfast, which we'll try out in the morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. It also talks about checkout here, which is super easy. You can just leave your key in the room, get your receipt through email. Checkout is at 11 a.m., just like a Disney Resort hotel. Inside the pamphlet, we've got a map of the first floor, um, plus a list of all of the amenities restaurants. We're going to be checking all of this stuff out um, before we leave tomorrow, which will be pretty cool. Uh, link to purchase Disney World theme park tickets and to get reservations for the Drury Shuttle to Disney World. We're going to test that out for ourselves um, because it is complicated. This is the Drury Shuttle. She said it does work on a reservation system, and reservations are highly 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 recommended and that you should make them two hours in advance these are the times that the shuttles leave for each of the parks it's a big bus so a lot of people can fit on it um and then these are the times that the shuttles come back to book a shuttle you just go to jurybus.com which is what i'm gonna do because i do need to head to magic kingdom tomorrow so we're gonna test out that jury shuttle you guys are coming with me we're gonna see how uh, hard this is compared to just taking Disney buses that come automatically every 20 minutes. And the last thing we've got here is just a couple of rules for the hotel, uh, which is pretty easy. Um, 10 p.m. quiet time, just so everyone gets a good night's sleep. I think we're going to head downstairs and see the kitchen and bar in just a second. I'm going to uh, chill in here for a minute, get a little bit of extra work done, and then head down there. Um, we also are going to talk about those Disney specific amenities and see something very special on the way. All right, so even though my room doesn't face the fireworks, there is a window by the elevator that does, so I can go see those fireworks views. Um, it's easiest to see Harmonious from here. Um, it's kind of a direct straight shot, and Epcot is pretty close. And of course, Harmonious will be closing relatively soon to make way for Epcot Forever, the transitional show, which will stick around until something new comes. So lots of changes happening in the Epcot nighttime spectacular world. Three main Disney specific perks at the Drury Plaza Hotel. One, fireworks views, obviously a very big perk. A lot of hotels around here have fireworks views just because the fireworks are so big, but that's still a really cool one here. You can request a fireworks view room. Um, it's also noted a lot of times in your booking and it might be a little more expensive. The second perk, the biggest perk in my opinion is that the Good Neighbor Hotels, the Disney Springs Hotels like the Drury do get 30 minutes early park entry into the theme park. So you get to join Disney Resort Hotel guests getting into the theme parks 30 minutes before for their posted opening. All you have to do is have your reservation confirmation on you, your reservation information, so they can check it at the gate, and then you can get into the parks and start riding rides 30 minutes before the park opens, which is amazing. And then the third thing, though this is not provided by Disney, Drury does have that complimentary shuttle to the Disney park. So that's the thing about some off-property hotels that wouldn't have transportation. You either have to rent a car or pay for parking, drive your own car and pay for parking at the parks, or um, take a ride share and pay for that. But here, they do have that complimentary shuttle, which might be a little complicated, but we're going to figure it out. And we're going to see how inconvenient it is, because everything else about this hotel is really impressing me. All right, so I've done some work. It's about time to eat again, I think, because um, I want to check out the real restaurant here instead of just going with free dinner. But before we go down, I want to make sure that we have our shuttle to Magic Kingdom booked for tomorrow. So what I have here is the shuttle schedule that I was given at check-in. Um, you can see it is complicated. You've got Magic Kingdom, I've got Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Disney Springs, when all those shuttles leave, and then when you can leave from the parks to come back to the Drury, and where the shuttle will pick you up. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and book our reservation for the 10 a.m. shuttle online. I am uh, meeting Sage tomorrow for a video at Magic Kingdom at 1030, so I think that should be perfect. All right. 
I uh, did went ahead and booked the bus and it was super easy. I was a little like there were like a lot of screens, but it's totally free to do. You put in your room number, you put in your information, book the bus you want. I also noticed that the earliest shuttle, some of the earliest ones still had about 30 seats available out of 50. So um, I don't I wouldn't be too worried if you don't book in advance, but it, they do recommend booking two hours in advance. So go ahead and do that just to be safe. You don't want to not have your shuttle to Magic Kingdom and then have to pay for a ride share. I think we should go eat again. Can't stop me from having two dinners. I'm like a hobbit. For second dinner, we are passing by the Bulk Hotel Circle Lights and headed to Kitchen Plus Bar. This is uh, the restaurant in the hotel. There are two. We're gonna check out the other one tomorrow during our walk. Um, but this one is gonna be the full bar open very late until about midnight, which is really awesome. Um, burgers and wings and bar pretzels and stuff like that, salads. So lots of options plus full bar. So a uh, really great spot if you're hanging out at the resort and we're gonna see how good the food is. Also, not only is there a really solid amount of seating indoors, as you can see from the bar and the high tops in here, but there also is a covered dining area outside as well. This is the Springs After Five cocktail. They have a couple of specialty cocktails here. Most of them are pretty basic, like classic cocktails you've probably heard of before. But this one I think is kind of fun since this is a Disney Springs hotel. Uh, it's made with Smirnoff, Malibu, orange, cranberry, and peach. Um, and it looks pretty tasty, so let's see how it is. All right, cheers. Much better than the free cocktails earlier, shockingly. Um, this one also ran me like over $10, so you know, that is how it is. Super peachy, super fruity. I can taste the alcohol, but it doesn't have a kick. I feel like this is definitely dangerous. Like you could get through a couple of these. Um, I think this is a really fun specialty drink. All right, so for my food, I went with one appetizer. This is the Bavarian pretzels that comes with their queso dip. It smells really, really good. I wish you guys could smell it through the camera because it really does smell good and it looks amazing. And then this is the green chili smash burger. It's like loaded with green chilies, has melty cheese all over it. It's two smash burger patties with tater tots and ketchup. You can pick between tater tots, uh, french fries, and a side salad. So it's a pretty good bar food, I think. All right, time for the smash burger. Smash burger is my preferred type of burger. I know that uh, Steakhouse 71 famous smash burger. That one's killer, but this looks pretty good. My waiter said this was the best one. It's pretty tasty. The main flavor is the green chili, which I really appreciate because I like green chili a lot. And then there's the melty cheese. I honestly wish there was a little more cheese, but I'm definitely still getting that like satisfying smash burger, super melty cheese, super thin patty sort of feeling. And I really do love the green chilies. I would never come out of my way to come here, but the fact that this is an option as late as midnight is amazing. It's totally amazing. So, especially with tater tots, which look pretty good too. Super crunchy on the outside, soft and potato on the inside. Just a solid bar meal. I think the green chilies really elevate it. All right, it's time for my queso and pretzel bread. It's like a disconnect happening because the pretzel bread is delicious and amazing and soft and pretzely. And the queso is delicious and queso-y. But I, I, want the, I want it to be tortilla chips if it's queso, and I want it to be beer cheese if it's pretzel bread. But both things together are delicious, and like, you can't really go wrong dipping delicious bread in delicious cheese. So I'm happy with it. There's just a little bit of, of disconnect, dissonance. All right, one last stop before the night ends. We are headed to Level Up Arcade. This is the 24 hour option here. Um, and we actually passed by some of the Walt Disney World amenities where they have um, this like Walt Disney World board. Um, and then also this little amenities desk. Hold on, hopscotch. Ah, 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 ah. Um, free coffee over here as well, which is really cool. Um, they do, of course, have coffee in the rooms, and you can get Starbucks coffee for a fee, like I did earlier, but you can also just come get it not for a fee over here, which I don't need coffee right now, but I did just eat, so maybe I do get decaf. And then over here, you do have this Disney planning desk. You can see their hours of operation are a little bit limited, but not too bad. Thursday through Monday, 12 to 8 p.m., and they can help you with Disney tickets, Disney questions, and things like that over here. But we are headed to the arcade. Uh, this is open 24 hours, so it's just a really cool event to have at the hotel. It's not super large, but there do look to be some fun games in here. Um, if you can't sleep at 3 a.m., you fight with your brother, you need to come play Terminator Salvation, then you can. And with that, that's an end to half of our staycation here at the Drury Hotel. There's a lot more to see tomorrow because we've got breakfast and I am interested because uh, free dinner was really good, so free breakfast? I've heard good things. Will it just be cereal or will it be exciting? We'll have to find out. Um, so I'll see you then, I'll see you in the morning. We're also gonna check out that 
Disney Parks transportation, which is also I'm nervous about. So, good night. Good morning. Um, it's a bright new day. I'm not sleepy, but I slept very well in that bed, actually. We've got a beautiful view right now of Lake Buena Vista, Magnus and Swan Dolphin, Epcot. Lots to see, so much to see. Um, but we are not headed over there. Well, we will be when we go to Magic Kingdom. But first, we've got some of the coolest amenities of the hotel to check out this morning, including that free breakfast. But on the way there, we're gonna check out the pool area. All right, we are out at the pool area, which if you can believe it, is actually open right now. <laughs> um, it's just kind of chilly out this morning. Of course, there are a handful of rules to keep in mind when swimming, but the pool's open from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So you can pretty much have a full pool day at the resort. It's not huge, but I mean, certainly do the trick. And the Drury Hotel in general is not huge, uh, which means hopefully this uh, this pool would never get too overly crowded. Outside by the pool area, you'll see that like covered dining area we saw last night. Except here we have the lakeside bar and grill. Now this is the outdoor dining area. It's open for shorter hours. So it's open starting at 11 and it usually goes till about four or five, um, at which point the kitchen and bar takes over. Uh, it's a pretty similar menu. And as you can see, it's not open right now, but you can also do the mobile order and pick up here from the lakeside bar and grill, which is pretty neat. But this is that other paid dining location here at Drury. We still got to see free food. There's also a kid-friendly splash pad, which I think is super cool. It's not running right now because it's pretty chilly, but um, it's nice that they have a splash pad. A lot of like, you know, Disney hotels, you can pretty much expect a kid's splash area, but not always at like non-Disney owned hotels. And there's a whirlpool spot as well. All of these have lake views too, which I find like very serene. There's a lot of lakes in Florida. Um, and a lot of Disney resorts have lake views just on man-made lakes and things like that. So, I mean, it's a nice plus here at Drury. All right, then over here, uh, you'll see that Drury does actually have a conference center, which makes this a great business destination. Um, it's got 10 meeting rooms, two ballrooms, an outdoor terrace. It's got this area here on the pool deck, over 17,000 feet of space. So a lot of space here for business meetings and things like that. Something to keep in mind is that if Drury is hosting a conference while you're here, the hotel might be a little busier than when it isn't. Um, that happens also at Disney hotels that have conference centers, but it's a very good amenity. There's also free Wi-Fi throughout, so it's something where you want to host an event. Now you will notice that it is not finished. Jury did just open and the hotel did kind of a phase opening and you can see here that they're actually still working on the conference center. Uh, there are three towers. The Cypress Tower is the one that our room was in that is completely finished. Uh, the other towers have yet to be completed, so that's on its way. Um, expected to be finished relatively soon, so uh, the conference center will be complete. But for now, Drury actually only has a very small amount of people who can stay at it right now before the Palm Tower is finished. And with that, let's go check out some free breakfast, shall we? So if you kind of go as far over towards the renovated area as you can, you will find the fitness center here at Drury. Registered hotel guests are only are allowed in here, but lots of equipment. They've got weight machines. Um, I see some yoga balls over there. Uh, free weights treadmills, cardio, uh, bikes, everything you might need. And then just next door, there is guest laundry, which is primarily coin-operated laundry. Now we're headed back to the commons for that rise and shine breakfast. Got the sodas and juices and everything open today. Do I want orange juice? It makes me sick, but I kind of want a little bit. And buffet-wise, we've got scrambled eggs, a bacon cheddar scramble, Breakfast potatoes, Odom's Tennessee Pride sausage, pancakes and oatmeal, hot syrup, biscuits, salsa, gravy. That's not too shabby. And then on the side here, there's milk, cereal, fresh fruit, and then some like toast bagels and toasters to toast. All right, I'm not a big breakfast person, but I figured I needed to try a couple of the things here. So what I've got is I've got the cheddar bacon eggs as well as the regular scrambled eggs, hot sauce on both because I like hot sauce. I've got breakfast potatoes here with some ketchup, sausage patty, um, one of the buttermilk biscuits with gravy that super looks like icing, but you know, it says gravy, so hopefully it's gravy. Um, I also got a coffee, a little bit of orange juice as a treat, um, and some syrup for my sausage. And to answer the question, no, the bar is not open for breakfast. I wish it was, because I love a Bloody Mary. Not that I need that for my Magic Kingdom birthday, but you know. Biscuits and gravy is one of my favorite breakfasts. I'm from the south. This is pretty mediocre gravy, but it does the trick. 
And the biscuit's actually surprisingly good. It's very soft. Um, it's a buttermilk biscuit, so I'm actually kind of impressed with the biscuit. The gravy's only okay. Um, it's so creamy. It's not nearly peppery enough. Um, there's no sausage chunks, which would make this killer, but I, yeah, this is, it's awesome that they even have it for free. It tastes better because it's free. Breakfast potatoes. They're tasty. They taste like batch made breakfast potatoes. They're a little like powdery tasting, like the potatoes themselves, probably because these were frozen and then cooked. Uh, but I don't super mind with ketchup and hot sauce, so I just love the option for breakfast potatoes. The only bacon's in the bacon egg scramble, so I got lucky today. Also, if you're not eating your sausage with syrup, what are you doing? This is a pretty basic sausage patty, but it's got a lot of great flavor. No weird textures or anything. Oh, the syrup. Bulk eggs. They're definitely bulk eggs. They're not salted or peppered right, but I, I could get salt and pepper. Actually, they're pretty good. Like with bulk eggs, bulk scrambled eggs, I sometimes get nervous that texturally they're going to be a little scary, but texturally they're good. Um, I put Tabasco on them and that's really helping. Overall, I'd say this breakfast is like middle, middle of the road, but because it's free, gets knocked up a bunch of notches. Now before we head out to see that shuttle service, let's talk a little bit about whether or not Drury is worth it. Um, so again, just a rehash on those perks. You do have proximity to the parks here. You've got the free shuttle service to the parks, early theme park entry 30 minutes prior to park open each day. And you also even net uh, preferred access to dining reservations just like a Disney World Resort hotel guest would. So you can start booking those 60 days ahead of your stay instead of 60 days ahead of like the day. So like if you have a seven day vacation, you can book for the seventh day, even if that's 67 days away. Pros wise, it's new. Everything here is spick and span, super shiny. It has, it's barely been stayed in. Uh, you also get the free food, which is a massive pro. I mean, literally just still blows my mind to think about the fact that you can get two free meals here. Brewery is also a really popular hotel chain. In fact, it's rated one of the highest like upper mid scale hotel chains. Um, and I think with good reason, I've had a really amazing stay here. And then of course that price, we paid $200 a night here. It goes down to 175 a night in that king bedroom. And with that, like that's the price of an all-star. It's the price of the cheapest Disney hotels. Cons wise, uh, which is fitting because we are headed to check out our transportation to the parks. Uh, it's a little bit harder to get to the parks via free transportation. You have to book. It's not just buses that come every 20 minutes like a Disney hotel. It is missing some of those Disney perks like that free transportation that Disney has. It has different perks, different free food perks and free transportation perks, but not as good on the transportation front. Um, and then it certainly does not have a Disney vibe, which I think is something that I know for me as a little kid, staying in a Disney hotel was part of the magic, and this certainly doesn't have the magic. It feels like a really basic hotel. Um, it feels like a businessy hotel. It feels like I could really get some work done in here, and I appreciate it as a grown up who goes to Disney hotels all the time, but I think it would be a bummer taking your whole family um, and missing out on some of that Disney magic. The Drury shuttle stop is super easy to find. It's literally immediately out front of the hotel. Um, you just kind of go to this like second layer, and the bus pulls up right here. <laughs> off the jury bus and you'll see we're at the TTC. Not Magic Kingdom, this is the Transportation and Ticket Center. It is the parking area slash transportation hub for Magic Kingdom. The only way to get dropped off right at the gates of Magic Kingdom is to take a Disney World bus um, or a monorail or a boat to get dropped up there. Uh, the other buses all drop here and any off-property buses or rideshare drop here at the Transportation and Ticket Center And then you have to take either a ferry boat monorail or sometimes a bus if it's really crowded to get all the way around Seven Seas Lagoon to Magic Kingdom That doesn't typically take very long, but you should budget in time for it I would recommend at least 20 minutes to get from the Transportation and Ticket Center to Magic Kingdom So if uh, you want to be there for a rope drop keep that in mind. It was about a 16 minute drive over here so you really want to leave the resort about an hour ahead of when you want to be in the park uh, for time for security, time to travel, and that's true of all the parks. Animal Kingdom's a little bit further away, but you could drop a little closer. The Drury bus, as well as other off-property buses, will drop you at the Transportation and Ticket Center for Magic Kingdom. 
They will drop you at the bus stops, but in the back at Epcot and Hollywood Studios. And for Animal Kingdom, there is a special like drop-off canopy that is by the rideshare, but it's still relatively close to the park. It's not nearly as far as the TTC. Overall, the bus ride was like super easy. They tell you to be there 10 minutes before the bus gets there. I got there 10 minutes before. Uh, in about five minutes, the bus pulled up, hopped on. Uh, because we didn't have a full bus, nobody checked my reservation. I think if there was a full bus, they would have checked the reservation. But uh, sure enough, it's a 16 minute drive exactly. They left right on the dot at 10, so do not miss that shuttle. And now we're headed to CTC. All right, I've got a ferry boat to catch over to Magic Kingdom, but I really enjoyed my stay at Drury. I think that there are two reasons you should not stay at Drury, and that's if you really want that Disney feel and if you're really concerned about transportation. I can almost guarantee that I would end up using rideshare if I was staying at the Drury just because I would forget to book my shuttle or I would miss my shuttle or I would decide that I wanted to go back to the resort at a weird time that was an hour away from the shuttle and I would end up paying for a rideshare. I can almost guarantee that would happen to me. Um, so that's the, those are the two reasons I wouldn't otherwise. Really great stay, really amazing stay. I think it's very fair for the price, um, especially compared to some Disney hotels. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stuff about Disney's newest hotel. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there are any other non-Disney hotels you'd like me to review around Disney World. And now, go watch my Walt Disney World Swan review. See you there!